All right, in this video we are going to learn about periodic trends related to the periodic table. But first let's take a look at the simple periodic table to understand the basics of it. So as you can see here, periodic table contain periods, which are these ones, and groups that are vertically arranged. We have group A and group B. Group A are called representative elements. Group B are called transition elements or transition metals. And we have also F transition elements. We have also uh, noble gases that by its name, they are inert gases. They, there are some exceptions that they form some compounds, but in most cases, they do not involve in chemical reactions. So now that you got the basics of periodic table, let's move now to the first trend. So let's start first with the atomic radius. You have to know that atomic radius increase as we move down to the group. It is obvious because we are going to increase the number of shells as we move down. If we move from left to the right across a periodic table, we see a decrease in atomic radius. This is due to the fact that you are adding protons. And by adding protons, it means that the attraction force by the positive charges are higher. Let's move now to the ionization energy. First, what is ionization energy? We have several steps of ionization. First, ionization energy, for example, is the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom and to form its own ion in its gaseous state. As for the trend, ionization energy, as we move from as we move down the group, ionization energy decreases. It is obvious because you are increasing the amount of radius of the atom and the electrons are far away from the nucleus, so it is easy to remove them. As we move from left to the right across a period in the periodic table, ionization energy increases. And as we move again from top to the bottom of within a group, ionization energy decreases. Okay, at the ionization energy, there are two exceptions, group 3A and group 6A. Why are these exceptions? Let's take two examples to explain that. The only way to explain why boron, that is group 3A, is an exception, so it's against the trend, it has a lower first ionization energy compared to beryllium, is by writing the electronic configuration. So in the case of the boron, we are going to have one electron to the 2p orbital. We know that 2p orbital is in higher energy compared to 2s. So it is, it is easier to remove an electron from here than to remove from here. That's the reason why boron has a lower first ionization energy compared to the beryllium. Let's move now to the second exception, that is uh, oxygen, or the group 6a, by including also oxygen. So. As we can see here, oxygen has a lower first ionization energy compared to nitrogen that is against the trend. Why this happen? Again, here we are going to explain through the electronic configuration. Let's build the electronic configuration for both these elements. As you can see from the electronic configurations, at 2p orbitals, oxygen has a paired electrons, but in the case of nitrogen all are singly, which means that due to the repulsion within the orbital, this electron here is much easier to be removed than one of these electrons here. That's why it has a lower first ionization energy compared to the trend. Let's move now to the ionic radius. It is simple. Let's take two examples to understand this. Lithium ion and lithium atom chlorine ion and chlorine atom. Who has the biggest radius? Lithium ion or lithium atom? In the case of cations, the atoms are going to have always the biggest radius. It's simple because let's draw a simple scheme. So we are going to have two 1s 
two electrons and one has two electrons. And in the case of lithium atom, it's going to have another electron here on the 2s. But in the case of lithium ion, here there is no electron, which means that this radius is smaller than this radius. In the case of anions, you're going to have a bigger radius to the anions because you're adding electrons to the shelf. This is the thing to keep in mind. Another thing about uh, ionic radius is iso uh, isoelectronic elements. What this means? Isoelectronic means that they have the same number of electrons, but they have different number of protons. Let's take an example. Sodium, for example. Manganese and aluminium. 2 plus, 3 plus. Sodium has 10 electrons as a cation, also this one has 10 electrons as a cation, and also this one has 10 electrons as a cation. But in, case, in terms of protons, this has 11 plus, this, is, this has uh, 12 protons, and this has 13 protons. It is obvious here that who has the highest number of protons compared to the number of electrons is going to have the lowest radius. So aluminium is going to have the lowest radius, and after that comes manganese, and the biggest radius is going to come for the sodium. So if you have several elements that have the same number of electrons but different number of protons, who has the smallest number of protons is going to have the biggest radius. Let's move now to the electron affinity. Electron affinity is the energy change that happened to an element if we add an electron, an element to its gasoil state. So for example, if we have chlorine plus one electron, it's going to be chlorine minus. It has an electron affinity equal to, for example, 370 kilojoules. As for the trends, electron affinity increase as we move from the left to the right across the periods in the periodic table. So increase. And as we move from the top to the bottom with inner group, electron affinity decrease. One thing to not worth mentioning here is that electron affinity, these trends, does not impact the noble gases because they do not have any ability to take electrons because their outermost shell is full. Electronegativity of an element is its tendency to take electrons by itself in a compound. As for the trends, electronegativity increases from left to the right across the period and electronegativity decrease as we move from top to the bottom within a group. So now, so now let's sum up all these trends together. First, let's start with atomic radius, with, which decrease from left to right across periods. So atomic radius decrease. Let's move now to the second one, which is the ionization energy. Ionization energy increase as we move from left to the right of the periodic table. So ionization energy increase. Let's move to the third one, which is the electron affinity. Electron affinity, as we move from left to the right to the period, increase electron affinity, increase. And the fourth one, electronegativity, as we move from left to the right, again, increase. Electronegativity, increase. Keep in mind something about electron affinity. Electron affinity increase from left to the right in terms of the process that they want. Chlorine want to take an electron it way more than sodium may want to take an electron. But in terms of energy, electron affinity decreases energy as we move from left to the right across the period. Atomic radius increase as we move down to the group. So atomic radius increase. Ionization energy decrease as we move down to the group because it's easier to remove electrons from a, an atom with the biggest radius compared to an atom which is with a smaller radius. So ionization energy decrease. Let's move to the third one, which is electron affinity. Electron affinity decrease. And the last one is electronegativity. Electronegativity again decrease as we move down to the group. So again, electronegativity decrease. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you don't like it, it's okay. Give a thumbs down. And see you in the next video. Peace.